Actress Haley Mills is most famous for her teen roles in 1960s Disney films. And seeing as how her plucky teen comedy The Parent Trap just turned 60, it's about time we take a closer look at her life and career, while reflecting on how she managed to rise to the top only to essentially lose everything. In this video, we'll see how she managed to make and subsequently lose her $17 million fortune. Haley Mills' Early Life and Career Haley Mills was born April 18, 1946. Her father was prolific English actor Sir John Mills, and her mother was actress and playwright Mary Haley Bell. The acting bug must have infected the whole family because her older sister, Juliette Mills, was also a gifted actress. Haley began her acting career as a child and was heralded by the media to be a promising young up-and-coming actress. In fact, after appearing in the British crime drama Tiger Bay in 1959, she was honored with a BAFTA award for Most Promising Newcomer. The following year, she received the Academy Juvenile Award for her role in Disney's 1960 feature, Pollyanna. For that portrayal, she was also awarded a Golden Globe for New Star of the Year. In the early days of her acting career, Mills appeared in six films produced by Walt Disney, most notably in the dual role as the twin sisters Susan and Sharon in the 1961 film The Parent Trap. Also in 1961, she gave a powerful performance in the film Whistled Down the Wind, which earned her another BAFTA Award nomination for the category of Best British Actress. Mills eventually left Disney to take on more mature roles. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. And stick around because we're going to touch on Haley Mills' personal account of working for Walt Disney. Learning about taxes the hard way. After spending the majority of her childhood acting in and promoting Disney films, Mills fully expected a sizable payday. But as it turned out, the money she had earned from her years with Disney had been put into a trust that she was told she would only gain access to when she turned 21. But once it came time to collect her money, Mills was hit with a bit of a reality check. The money she had made had been heavily taxed by the British Revenue Service at an unheard of rate of 91%. In her memoir, Forever Young, Mills described the moment when she realized most of her money was already gone. She said once her lawyer informed her of the situation with the Revenue Service and how they were essentially gobbling up all of her earnings, she felt the blood drain from her face. Her lawyer told her there was essentially nothing she could do, and in his opinion, she might as well leave the country. He also told her that she could have repudiated the trust before she turned 21, but it was too late for that. Mills fought back. Apparently, the revenue service hit her with such a high tax rate because the money was meant to be used to rebuild England after World War II. While she was advised by her legal counsel to either sue her attorney or her father over the lack of proper financial advisement with the fund, Mills chose to do neither. Instead, she applied for a tax appeal, and after waiting nearly two years after making the submission, a judgment was ruled against her. Not backing down quite yet, she appealed the ruling three years later, but again in 1971, she received another judgment that wasn't in her favor. In 72, however, Mills finally got a lucky break when her tax case came before the master of the rolls, Lord Denning. After her lawyer explained she had already paid taxes on her earnings and shouldn't be required to pay a surtax, Lord Denning ruled that the money did, in fact, rightfully belong to her. Mills' celebration was cut short. While Mills likely walked out of that courtroom feeling victorious, the House of Lords ultimately decided to appeal Denning's ruling in 1974 and ruled it was null and void. Mills claims in her memoir she lost around £2 million, which adjusted for inflation comes out to about $17 million today. In her book, she likened the state to a horde of pirates who plundered her trust. The Disney money all dried up before she even got a chance to see it. She always knew it was waiting for her, and one day she expected to have it, but in the end it was all a dream. In Forever Young, Mills says that while she does occasionally mourn the loss of the freedom that her small fortune might have afforded her, she doesn't actually miss the money itself. Mills' son Crispian Mills, who helped write his mother's memoir, told the LA Times that the way his mother describes the experience of losing all that money as being very innocent. From her perspective, it seems silly to feel sad for something you never really had. Mills' relationship with Walt Disney Talking to Vulture in August of 2021, Mills revealed that Walt Disney often visited the sets of the films he produced. 
He'd visit all the sets and sound stages and introduce himself to the cast and crew. Mills further shared that Walt had a very personal investment in every one of his movies and did his best to stay involved with the production and all the actors. He was in love with the entire process of filmmaking and was intricately involved with every frame and every aspect of his films. He was also very encouraging to everyone involved. Mills had a tremendous amount of respect for Disney, and he ultimately turned her into a star. Despite the less-than-stellar reputation that Walt has received in recent years, Mills has described him as a lovely, friendly, warm, sweet, and genuine human being. While the world is all too familiar with the horror stories told by former Mouse House child stars like Demi Lovato and Miley Cyrus, Mills says she never felt exploited while working for Disney as a child. Rather, he was reportedly quite protective of her image and her activities. Mills told the LA Times that Walt was in many ways like a father figure. Mills' battle with bulimia. In her memoir, Haley discussed her dealings with the eating disorder bulimia. Talking to Fox News, she further described what it was like going through that experience. She said that after she reached her desired skeletal weight, she actually stopped getting her period and developed skin problems. She started breaking out and had to take antibiotics for several years. At the time, she didn't know bulimia was a thing. She even quipped that she thought she had come up with it all by herself. Her struggles with eating started when she met a famous horse racing jockey who informed her that he would eat grass after meals to make himself throw up. So Mills started doing the same and kept it a secret from everyone she knew. Fortunately, she has since recovered from her eating disorder, which is a blessing since it can often lead to death. Mills also says she's happy to live in a time when people can express themselves more freely without fear of judgment. Today, people dealing with eating disorders don't have to hide them from others. In her time, there was a great deal of stigma associated with such things, but not as much today, even though bulimia and other eating disorders are still very common. If you or someone you know is struggling with an eating disorder, you can contact the National Eating Disorder Association helpline by calling 1-800-931-2237 or by texting NEDA to 741741. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite Haley Mills film role? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.